You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again. Time for a little bit of the old Volatility Views the premier program for volatility traders. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the T-H-E, optionsinsider.com, as well as from the network, upon which so many of you are binging out there this week. Man, we got a fun one today. <laughs> a little bit to talk about here on the old Vol Views. Hope your trading week is going well. Hope the end of your trading week is going well. You didn't get caught wrong-footed in this vol move we're about to discuss here on the show. Of course, if you like what you hear, this show, anything else on the network, leave a comment, a rating, a star, a review. All that stuff does help new people continue to discover the content. And 17-plus years later, go figure, there are still new people discovering it all the time. So uh, rating a star, a comment does go a long way. Of course, if you hear one of the many sponsors out there on the network, you like what they're doing you want to let them know you heard them on the network. That goes a long way as well uh, to keep in the lights on for you folks here. Again, 17 plus years of awesome content out there, including over a decade now of volatility views. Crazy to say that out loud. Of course, if you want to go above and beyond, you want even more content in your lives. You don't want your broadcast week to end with volatility views. And who would? Then head on over to the optionsinsider.com slash pro. That won't just get you the live for this show and everything else we do, it also gets you access to options oddities coming up after Vol Views a little bit later today. What weird trades made it onto our radar? Got a feeling there's a few. <laughs> Check us out over there on options oddities. Also had a great pro Q&A earlier this week with our buddy, Mr. Rich Excel, tackling volatility across a wide range of asset classes, FX, energy, I think, ags, it was all of it. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of equities smattered in there as well, as well as a little bit of talk of uh, UVIX and UVXY and VIX, some plain vanilla vol products, if you will. So if you want to check out all that awesome stuff, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go. As we go around the horn, see who's joining us on the old Volatility Views program today. Let's turn now to welcome on in the old Vol Views hot seat this week, a newcomer to the program and indeed to the network he is Michael Lisman, the president over there at Dor Jolie. Very festive. Dor Jolie Capital. Michael, welcome to the Volatility Views program. Thanks for having me on. Well, you come highly recommended by one uh, James Carroll III, Esquire. So uh, he actually talked you up quite a bit. So you have quite a high bar to meet. So I hope you're ready out there, sir. I, I... We'll get to all the vol fun in a second. But as I mentioned, this is your first time here on the old network. Why don't you go ahead and give our audience a bit of an overview of your background in the world of options and indeed volatility, as well as 
what the heck it is you do over there at Dorjali Capital. Well, I started basically at 18 about uh, trading options. I traded OEX options back in the late 80s, uh, back when you could only buy them unless you were You were a 1-5 guy? Wow, you don't meet many 1-5 <laughs> guys anymore. Wow. <laughs> you should wear a little bag um, that says, I was a 1-5 guy. Only five people <laughs> would know what that was, but they would all think it was awesome. <laughs> Um, I've been been basically on and off in the markets uh, ever since. Uh, it wasn't until oh, uh, 20, 2010, 2011, I started to get back into it and uh, got turned on to the Tasty Trade method of, of premium collection and studied all of their stuff. And basically, I've been a premium seller ever since uh, and found UVXY through a SIBO tool uh, that that uh, gave annualized returns based on the, the weekly volatility. So UVXY was always up in the top 10 of, of option contracts uh, on that tool. So I discovered UVXY and have been trading it almost exclusively ever since. Yeah, that really was a, a watershed moment for you. It's kind of all of your branding going forward. You go by UVXY trader on on Twitter slash X. So that really was a, uh, an awakening moment for your trading there, Michael. <laughs> well, since I was an options guy, uh, DVIX wasn't, wasn't available to me because there were no options on it. Ah, yes. Uh, they were, they were both two X at the time. So UVXY was, was the one. So that's the one I latched on to. And even though not, we now have UVIX at two X and uh, UVIX was delevered a bit. I, I still, since all of my back tests and studies are based off of UV, UVXY, that's kind of where I'm, I'm staying, although I trade them all. That, that's what I use to evaluate the current state of the market. Now we'll get to all the UVX versus UVXY fun in a second. First, uh, let's keep on rolling ahead right on into the volatility review. It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the Volatility Review. All right, everybody, welcome to the Volatility Review, the portion of the show where we do just that. We break down the week that was, and indeed still is, from a ball trading and trending and analysis and all sorts of fun perspectives. And man, we, we are having some fun. Michael, you picked a good one <laughs> to come on out there this week because there is a little bit popping off out there. You know, how long have we been saying on this network? In fact, just last week on the show, we were all kind of scratching our chins and saying, what is going on with this market? We, of course, last week had that very hot labor market data out there, and it seemed like the nail was in the coffin for the three, the much-anticipated three rate cuts, and yet the market was rallying hard, whistling past the graveyard, and it kind of surprised all of us on the show. Fast forward to this week, of course, earlier this week, we saw a little bit of trepidation. CPI numbers coming in hot, PPI numbers coming in hot. And now we have, of course, the kickoff of earnings season, Morgan and a few others spooking people, not to mention, of course, uh, the looming prospect of escalation in the Middle East. Never a good thing out there. So the market's now finally starting to wear it a little bit. Uh, S&P was selling off early and they tried to rally coming in to start the show. The S&P was Seemed like it was starting to do its old turnaround game. And now as we're kicking off the show, I guess we spooked things in Volview's land here because we were back at pretty much beyond the lows for the day now. S&P off 1.5%. It's been a little while since we've seen that much dark side on the screen. The Dow off about 1.3% and the NASDAQ off about one and two thirds percent. And let's not forget our old friend, small caps, IWM off a little over one and a half percent as well all that a long way around to saying man our old friend vix hitting levels we haven't seen in quite some time just yesterday just yesterday on the option block i was lamenting with our buddy the flow master from SIBO about how short-lived all this vol upside is and if you have upside on involved man especially this week another example of it you had to get in there quick 
because we were flirting with some 16 handles and change, and then it kind of all died, as it always does. So hopefully you were the ones out there listening who kept a little bit of powder dry for a rainy day, because we got that rainy day today. VIX Cash, 18 and a half. It just ticked up another point. Right as we kicked off the show, we were down at 17 and a half. All right, before we commence, now back up to 18 and a half. Puts us up nearly three points. 2.8 points, uh, to be precise, out there. And also, uh, high was about 18.78 earlier this morning. We might be threatening that again. We'll see. <laughs> We're going to hit a 19 handle today. Haven't seen that in quite some time out there. VVIX, again, as we just said on the show, man, when VVIX starts to get into the mid-70s, uh, watch out, because it typically doesn't tend to hang out there very long. And that is the case again this week. VVIX back up into triple digits. 106 right now. Up a whopping 17 points from this time last week. So vol is popping. Vol of vol is popping. As I said, Michael, you picked a good week to join us here on Volatility Views. As our guest, I'll give you pride of place while I go sort out what's going on with uh, Mr. Meatball's connection there. Uh, what is catching? We'll get to all the UVXY and all that other fun in a second. But what's catching your eye out there right now from a broad volatility and markets perspective, sir? Um, I mean, this this is kind of expected. Uh, as as many have reported, that the first half of April is is historically rocky, followed by a, a much smoother bullish portion. Uh, I, I also use uh, a spike cadence model in in my management of of VIX volatility. Uh, and this this level of spike is we were due for it. Uh, actually, a little bit overdue. We're all actually due for even larger spikes, but uh, this is so far pedestrian and expected. So we're just going to ride this one out. I don't expect it to last long, but who knows? It could could catch a bid and keep running. Pedestrian and expected. You're getting me excited, Michael. Getting me excited to tune in to the rest of the show. It's going to be a pedestrian show. Listen, I'm just giving you a hard time. But uh, intriguing stuff. Let's go see now if we have his technological issues sorted out. Mr. Meatball, third time's a charm, sir. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Ah, can you hear me? Yes, we can. You can. All right. Oh, you can. <laughs> yes, we can now. Yes. <laughs> All right. Good to see you. Sorry about that. I don't know what the deal was. Didn't pay the internet bill down there in the Southern Volatility Mecca, eh? I, I guess not. Jeez. Okay, so last week it was um, the Rock Lobster completely knocked off the grid. Now you're following suit down there in Austin. I, I guess so. Jeez. Um, yeah, it's an interesting day. Um, um, I think it's being driven primarily by some geopolitical stuff. But, um, you know, I think it's been kind of needed, the sell-off that we've got. Um, you know, we still have yet to, since... January 4th to see two days in a row below the 21 day moving average. And we haven't touched the 50 since October. We got really close today. The 50 day moving average for the S and P is five eleven twenty two. So watch that level. My guess is that, uh, you know, the afternoon shorters, it, it, you know what happens every afternoon. They come in and buy them. We'll close the day down. We'll close the day down. 55 or something like that, and then uh, happens on the day. Maybe we get out. Uh, oh, I, I'm just up in the air whether, but we're definitely getting a nice move in VIX, getting a nice move in volatility. Um, I was going to start put on a trade in UVXY today, but the implied vol on UVXY is so high that um, if I was going to do anything, I'd be looking to short instead of go long. Um, if only we had somebody that knew of, knew about shorting UVXY premium that, that could talk on the show. <laughs> all right, then let's not bury the lead any further. Then let's get to we'll get to all the other usual fun in a second, listeners, the VIX and the bar and the futures and all that fun. Uh, but let's jump to where we usually end the show right now, which is the vol ETPs. In particular, a little product known as UVXY. It is fortuitous timing for a couple of reasons that we have. Uh, Michael on today, not just the fact that Vol is finally popping again, that's worthy of note in and of itself, uh, but also UVXY, if you fired up your screens today, listeners, you may notice <laughs> a little bit of a different price level than it was, let's say, earlier this week, late last week. I saw a lot of people on, on Vol Twit and FinTwit were completely flummoxed by this. What's going on with UVXY? Apparently, they didn't get the memo, uh, but yes, the reverse split is in, listeners. Uh, UVXY... 39.6 right now, up 
Oh, a whopping 32 and a half handles <laughs> from this time last week. Uh, we were joking about this just a few weeks ago. I think it was when Jim Carroll was on, actually. Uh, all of us were kind of, we heard the, the reverse split was in. We got excited. We're like, all right, here we go. 10 for one. Let's, let's do some business in UVXY again. Even I, notorious UVXY recalcitrant, was like, oh, okay. I might be, I might be tempted back in with a good 10 for one. And, and then Jim drops the hammer that it's only five for one. And we all kind of just went, oh, <laughs> it kind of took all of the wind out of our sails out there. But Michael, you are, as you mentioned at the top of the show there, the UVXY guy. This is your bailiwick. Uh, let's start there. What are your thoughts on this uh, massive, quote unquote, uh, reverse split out there? Uh, were you a fan of it? Were you looking for more? And how does that impact your use case for the product right now, sir? Um, well, actually, this, this, the five for one for me was completely expected. If the, uh, it was uh, released at $40 a share, ProShares loves to keep it in that area. So there was no way they were going to go 10 for one and, and make it pop to 60, 70 bucks, or in this case, 80 bucks. Uh, five for one was always on my radar for what it was going to be. Um, I was, I was talking to uh, some other people about when it was very low, when it was down in the threes before the last split and why, why pro shares was taking so long and you know, what, what was the motivation? And there were, there are lots of reasons uh, for one that market makers make a lot more money when it's low because the percentage basis of the contract costs are, are much higher for them as opposed to when the spot is much, much larger. Um, and, and pro shares, if, if you look through their past split announcements, they always group them together. So they need, they need a crowd to go along with it. So if UVXY is the only one that needs attention, they're going to hang on to it for a little bit longer. And I think the last one they, they handled, uh, was, it was about 10 uh, ETFs that they split reverse or forward so this the the five for one for me was was expected uh they always like to keep it an even number just in case uh multiple splits stack on current contracts so like we have two non-standard contracts out there right now that represent only two shares per option contract i think that's the june contract and the january for next year and i do remember an instance uh, i think it was in 20 17 when it was down to one share per option contract ah yes the uh, the non-standard vestigial fund that happens after these reverse splits and i agree with you the 5x is kind of expected we've we've learned to temper our expectations out here in the vol space after years and years of disappointment but it's always nice to hope. It's always nice to dream of, of bigger, better things. Maybe someday we'll get there. Of course, I, I say that, but when they did the recent Uvix reverse split <laughs> and Uvix, the beast that it is, wild, untamed beast that it is, got up to a, a similar level as this, uh, all of us suddenly were, were, very, were very maybe regretting what we were wishing for because Uvix at a 40 is a monster. It is an untamed beast. It is. Very few are prepared to deal with. Uh, Mr. Meatball, I know you were excited by this reverse split in UVXY. What are your thoughts, uh, five for one versus 10 for one? And what we're seeing out here right now with uh, UVXY now threatening 40, sir? Yeah, it was a well-timed reverse split because uh, Vol blew up literally the, the day they listed options on this thing. Um, you're, we're seeing a, a pretty out-of-bounds move um, in volatility, and that's allowing UVXY to explode if you look at the VIX itself. One of the reasons why people like to be short UVXY is because um, when futures term structure is in a contango, uh, UVXY will have a decay that essentially makes it evaporate toward another reverse split. But right now, um, with the VIX trading 19 and that April future at 1780 and the May future at 1775, Theoretically, UBXY is actually going up every day and not down. So it is not the day. To, it, today is not the day to uh, to start a big short program in UVXY. 
You mentioned some volume. Yeah, a little bit lighten up the tape out there in UBXY today. Already 68,000 contracts on the tape right now. That compares to the ADV of 107, so pretty much about 40,000 left to go. I think they're going to hit it there today, listeners. Uh, that ADV is in and of itself up about 3,000 out there. So a lot to unpack. But be, before we go any further, Michael, you kind of touched on it at the top of the show. I want to revisit a, a topic that has been a, a frequent discussion point. I usually give your buddy, Mr. Jim Carroll, a hard time for it when he's on the show. I call him the, the captain of the UVXY Defense Force. I guess if he's the captain, I guess I'm not sure that makes you uh, the general, the admiral, <laughs> the uh, local governor general out there. Whatever you want to call yourself, satrap. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's an interesting question. Mark and I have said many times on the show, I think Andrew as well, and most of our other guests, uh, when you look at the pure product perspective, you know, you want a levered VIX ETP. UVIX is now 2X, but uh, UVXY used to be 2X. Of course, post Valmageddon got neutered down to 1.5X. I've said before, that really was a distasteful moment for me out there, what they did. Uh, I had some UVXY out there at the time. They neutered it mid-cycle, pretty much overnight. I not left the bad taste in a lot of people's mouths, including myself, out there. So uh, I'm curious for you now that you're, you know, so inextricably linked to UVXY. Obviously, UVX exists. It's not putting up these numbers. It's not putting up 70,000 contracts a day or 100,000. But it does exist, and it is technically the quote-unquote superior product with the better degree of leverage. I'm curious for you why you prefer UVXY, sir? Because you're not alone. A lot of our audience, whenever we do polls, UVXY tends to take it as well. So in that case, I guess I am the outlier. So explain to me, why do you like a UVXY better, sir? Uh, one word, liquidity. If, if you look at the uh, options chain and the, and the bid-ask spreads, uh, if, you, if you try to trade it and try to get fills, uh, how challenging it is. Uh, and you know, if, if you're going large, pennies matter. Uh, UVXY is is the king right now. It's it's the one that's most liquid. Uh, VXX used to be, uh, I think that one got out of favor after Barclays dropped the ball on uh, its its license to issue shares. Um, but I still trade all of them. Uh, they they all have their place. Uh, the great thing about having various level, levels of uh, levering. And, and options is that you can zero in on exactly the risk reward that you want to target. Uh, so if you want to be uh, more conservative, you could go with VXX. If you want to go all out, you go with UVIX. Uh, it, it's really just a matter of, of what your, your outlook is, what your targets are, and you can, you can pick the product and the, and the strategy to fit that outlook. You know, that is the one nail in the UVIX coffin, uh, which is liquidity. 19,000 out here today on the tape for UVIX, which, again, is, is impressive, but it's also not the uh, 68,000 we were just talking about. By the way, UVIX hanging out right now, 11 and three quarters, up nearly one and a half points from this time last week. So UVIX looking pretty robust in and of itself right now. 19,000 contracts on the tape. That compares to an ADV of just 19,000, which in and of itself is up 2,000 from last week. So UVIX slowly moving in the right direction, just not quite there yet. Let me ask you this, Michael. In a hypothetical world where both UVIX and UVXY are both averaging the same amount, let's say it's 100,000 contracts a day, are you switching your allegiance? Are you moving your flag from UVXY to UVIX or UVXY for life? Is it tattooed on your chest? Oh, no. Well, I'm, I'll, I'll always be branding UVXY just because that's what I have out there. But, no, I would go UVIX. Uh, higher levering means, means larger beta slippage. Uh, it's, it's more guaranteed downside action just based on that beta slippage. So I would, I would go UVIX if all things being equal. There we go, Mr. Meatball. The Million Dollar Man had it right. Everyone has a price. And in this case, it's 100,000 contracts a day for UVIX. Mr. Meatball, this is something you and I have talked about a lot in the past. Obviously, it's a hot day for both of them right now. I know you've been like me. You've kind of been on the, I won't say anti, but less excited about UVXY camp versus UVIX. Does this reverse split make up for the lack of leverage, in your opinion? Are you starting to lean UVXY right now? Uh, I, you know, for right now with this reverse split, I'm only going to be trading UVXY until UVIX 
reverse splits itself um, because, hey, it's $40. There, there's some juice there that, that I can take advantage of that, that didn't exist, uh, you know, just a, a few uh, just a few days ago. Um, and uh, I can't wait to, uh, to start uh, playing with it. Should be fun. And Michael, you mentioned you're a bit of a premium harvester out there, which is interesting because most of the use case we talk about in these vol ETPs, whether it's UVX or UVXY, is loading up on the puts at the money, out of the money, whatever you prefer. Maybe some put verticals or one by twos or things like that. But it tends to be premium buying, excuse me, leaning towards the dark side. You said you're more of a premium harvester. So what is your typical approach out there when you're trading UVXY? Uh, well, of course, it. It depends greatly on on the market conditions. A uh, day like today, I'm looking to sell something a long dated vertical spread, uh, just in case it it kind of goes crazy. Uh, but vertical spreads kind of defeat the high IV that we have. Uh, back in the old days, when when IV was much higher than it is now, and the the brokers didn't demand 200 uh, percent of notional for margin requirements, I would just sell naked calls here. Uh, at the money or slightly in the money uh, out just a week. And if you, I, I don't see what the IV for UVXY is right this second, but uh, typically when it was 175% on a weekly basis, that was my back the truck up level. Well, it's coming in it at 140 right now. So coming in okay. at 140 right now. So you've got to be getting excited. Yeah, it's, it's, it's getting close. It's, it's rarely been this rich. Uh, you know, over the last over the last couple of years, actually since COVID, COVID kind of broke it for some reason, and I don't quite know why. Uh, I used to watch VVIX, and whenever VVIX got to 105, that meant UVXY was was rich with premium to sell. Uh, that broke as well, um, and markets always change. Uh, it does open up another other opportunities makes premium cheaper so you can buy you can go long which i i normally dissuade people from doing but you can you can buy with at much lower premiums and take less risk uh going either long or short by by going buying options so you're not a fan of, of playing the erosion game to the downside you're more of kind of a pick your poison selling premium to the upside selling premium to that sounds like if you said you're selling naked calls you're okay being a little naked short units, a product like UVXY that doesn't spook you? Nope, not at all. I've been, I've been doing it for uh, five years now. And, uh, but like I said, interactive brokers raised their margin requirements. They doubled them uh, last summer and they haven't, haven't let go. Even, even with VIX going down into the 11, had an 11 handle uh, earlier, they're still holding on to that 200% margin requirement. And that just, you have to put up too much capital to get the same ROI off of that capital. So I've, I've since stopped selling naked calls, but if, if I, if I move to another broker, that's back at hundred percent of notional for a margin requirement, I would be, I'd be selling naked calls again. And five years, obviously outside that time horizon for uh, the infamous, <laughs> the infamous Volmageddon out there. Of course, if you get a repeat of Volmageddon, that naked upside could be a little bit spooky. You, you don't want to, pick up any even like junk calls just in case and maybe just to lower that margin requirement, right? Of course. Uh, the month before Vomageddon, I was, I had been shorting deep out of the money uh, puts on SVXY thinking, you know, there's a lot of premium down here and, you know, what's the chances of it getting cut in half? <laughs> and I, I had been doing that for probably a good year, but uh, fortunately for me, I had closed out all the S. S, uh, VXY positions and just had UVXY positions for Volmageddon. Oh, wow. Do you ever look at doing like ratio spreads? Um, because on the upside, those can be really juicy. Um, you know, I, I, unfortunately, with this reverse split, they only have strikes up to 45 right now. But I'm looking at the like June 40, 45 call one by two. The June 40 calls are like nine bucks. and you can probably get close to eight dollars on the forty-five call. Um, do you ever do you ever play around with stuff like that, or is that just a little bit outside your wheelhouse? No, actually, actually, I do. That's that would be my tail hedge trade 
uh, which which I've put on probably a half a dozen times this year. Uh, it, it's gone 50, 50 for me. I needed a, a spike. Unfortunately, I did not have one on for today. Uh, I had one on two weeks ago. But what I would do is buy uh, buy two just out of the money and sell one just in the money. Uh, Oh, really? you, you're going that way. I was thinking the other way around for premium harvesting, buying the 40, the 40s, selling two of the 45s. Right. Um, I would do that for, I, would do, I was doing that for natural gas ETFs. Uh, I haven't done it for volatility just because I think I've got better ways to monetize it. Uh, but as a, as a long play, I was, I was selling one and buying two. Uh, mm. And you know you you've, you're you're into profit, uh, your your break even is is not much higher. I think the last one I put on, uh, my break even was at six ninety nine, which would have been which would have been uh, what thirty five right here. Mm -hmm. So that would have paid off nicely. You're slinging that gas upside as well. You like yourself a little bit of a volatile product, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I like this guy. Yes, he does. Goes straight for the fire <laughs> out there. Yeah, our, our chat agrees with me. Options Queen in our chat says, it takes a brave man to sell naked calls in any volatility product, let alone UVXY. Uh, so, yeah, uh, if you're slinging upside in, in that gas, too, add that to the fire. Let me ask you this, Michael, because one of the most common use cases we get approached by with our listeners, I won't call it set it and forget it, but it's a little bit more, shall we say, hands-off approach to trading these types of vol ETPs, which as we all know, suffer badly from erosion at the end of the day. They like to come in and they want to buy premium. I know cover years, but they're going to buy premium going out a little bit longer, six months, maybe a year, somewhere in that time frame, and they're going to buy 30, 40, maybe even 50% out of the money, depending on where they're looking out there right now. So maybe right now in UBXY, maybe that would line up at around a 25 handle, six months, a year out, something along those lines. You buy that put, it's going to cost you a bit, but then they could, again, not quite set it and forget it, but they don't really have to babysit it as much. And it passed his prologue, you know, barring a, a return of a Volmageddon or something else like that, it's probably going to pay off for them. What are your thoughts on that more longer term hands off approach to trading a product like UVXY? Um, that that would almost be if, if you factored in the cost of the premium that you're paying, uh, it would almost be like just going long SVX or SVXY. Uh, although if you as if you go long one of the inverse, you've got data slippage just eating into you every day, day after day. Um, and if you if you go long the puts on UVXY or UVIX. Uh, you'll notice that most of the, the expected decay is priced in. Now, I'm not saying you're going to lose money on it. Matter of fact, more often than not, you're going to make money because the product does go down, but it's just not as, as juicy as it is, you know, being a little riskier and selling naked calls, uh, selling in the money calls, uh, all, all kinds of things to, to get the most bang for the buck. Getting some bang for the buck indeed out there. Listen, we could spend the rest of the show. We're already come up against it. <laughs> we haven't even gotten uh, to the mothership VIX option. So let's keep on rolling there, listeners. If you want more UVXY, I guess we'll have to bring Michael back on again. But coming in to the start of the show, it has obviously firmed up now. As we were talking, uh, VIX Cash has firmed up to about a 19 handle right now, listeners. Up over three, about 3.3 points now on the week. Well beyond the high, I was just saying, of 1878 earlier today that means the futures looking a little bit juicy a little bit uh not quite backward but they're getting there <laughs> they're firming up in the front that's for sure uh april was at about oh 17 and a half a little more it puts it up about 1.9 points just as of a few minutes ago listen we just re-racked this obviously because futures curve evolving as the show has been going on and uh, may up about 1.4 points from where it was uh, this time last week. Mr. Meatball, we'll start with you, sir. Obviously, things getting a little frothy out there. What's catching your eye on the vol surface this week? Yeah, well, like I said, um, the cash index is now trading over 19. Uh, so it is now trading above April, May, June, July, and August, and September. Um, and we now have April trading above May. Now, April's only got a couple of days left. And May and June are sitting on top of each other. So we are dangerously close to um, going into a full-on 
backwardation and the market potentially, you know, the market is signaling that they're, they're very nervous about uh, what could happen this weekend. Um, that that's what I'm looking at. Uh, Mr. Michael, same question for you. Obviously you're hanging your hat in UVXY. So you have to be pretty familiar with what's cooking out there in the VIX futures. What is catching your eye out there this week in the volatility surface, sir? Um, uh, well, like Sebastian said, uh, cash is, is way over the front month, which, you know, what is that telling you? It's telling you that the futures traders are saying, hey, it's not cash isn't going to be there. I, whether it expires next week, it's not going to be there in a week. Uh, not that it can't rise up to meet it, but uh, all, all, of, all of these things, if you look at the curve, uh, while they're, they're not predictive, they at least tell you what the current traders are thinking. Uh, and we're not, you know, we're, this is as close as we've come to backwardation since uh, October. I don't even know if we were, I think we were there for like one day back in October uh, for backwardation. And even, even then, it's, it's such a slight amount uh, that the drag that it gives to the ETPs is, is slight. Uh, nothing, nothing like 2020, because that was, that was real. Uh, but like I said uh, earlier, this this is expected. This happens. Uh, if if you're a trader, you've got to you've got to be ready for these types of events, either either on the long side or short side, however you're playing it. Indeed. Let's see how the market is playing this right now. Let's go out to VIX options first. Is it an active day? Yes, a resoundingly good day out there in the markets, listeners. At least from a volume perspective, VIX. Threatening 2 million contracts as of right now. I can't remember the last time we saw it this robust this early in the session. 1.85 million contracts on the tape already. That's almost the sum total of an entire week. Some of these light weeks we've been having of late. So, uh, yeah, spoiler alert. Today is a banger, listeners. Uh, the ADV, 808,000, up a whopping 94,000 from this time last week. And guess what? It's going to be going up again after today's action looking at the top 10 what's open for size in vix options coming into today well the thing a lot of you have been waiting for is actually happening finally which is we're getting some puts in the top 10 again been a while since we've seen this ratio three puts actually making it into the top 10 so we're now at a whopping seven to three calls over puts that's the juiciest it's been from a put perspective in i don't know at least six months it's been quite some time probably longer out there and coming in at number 10 cost you 204,000 contracts to break into the top 10 that gets you to our first of three puts at 204,000 of the April 14 puts a uh, spoiler alert those ain't looking great but these are actually uh, these are expiring next week so all the April we're talking about here are indeed going the way of the dodo next week so you got a few more days at least uh, even though again spoiler alert Ain't looking great for the 14 puts right now. Number nine, 205,000 April 16 calls. By the way, I say that as the owner. You folks know that. You made me buy them of the April 13 puts. So I'm laughing, but I feel your pain. A 205,000, number nine of the April 16 calls. Number eight, 206,000 of the May 20s. Number seven, 213,000 of the June 35s. Here we go with some of the fun stuff. Number six, 213,000 as well of the AUG 47 halves. Then number five, 215,000 of our second of three puts. It's the April 13 half puts. A number four, 225,000 of the May 47 halves. Gotta love those 47 half strikes. A number three, our third of three puts here and the highest ranking in our top 10, 246,000 of the April 15 puts. Even those right now. Looking dubious. We've got a little bit of time, listeners. Uh, number two, 272,000 of the April 20s. And the number one size position in VIX options right now, 278,000 of the May 35s. Uh, let's run through. Like we said, we're already starting to come up against it here. It's been a fascinating show already. Uh, but uh, like we said, today, a banger day by just about any definition. The big dog today, 116,000 of the May 25 calls. Uh, there's some funkiness afoot out here today, listeners, because I was trying to look earlier while we were talking to see exactly what they're up to out there with these. It looks like there's a vertical going up. It's the May 25, 30, 40 vertical uh, going up 20. It started going up 23,750 times each. So a three-way. Uh, maybe they're rolling. I have no idea what they're doing with this thing, but it's not opening on any of these strikes. So it could just be a closing or rolling. But total, again, of 116,000 
of the May 25. So that's obviously the strike that is leading the dance out here. Followed by number two, 90,000 of the April 17s. A little bit more, dare I say it, reasonable. Number three, right behind it, 89,000 of the April 20s. Number four, 70,000. Man, these numbers are just off the charts today. 70,000 of the April 17 puts. A 17 put, that would have been ridiculously price prohibitive not too long ago. And the number five, 66,000 of the April 15 puts. Yesterday, no slouch, but when you compare it to today, over a million contracts below. 808,000 contracts on the tape. Uh, the big dog yesterday, 69,000 of the May 13 half puts, followed by about 47,000 of the April 13 half puts, so maybe a little bit of roll action there. Number three, 42,000 of the May 25s. Number four, 37,000 of the May 18s. And number five, 35,000 of the April 15 puts. Wednesday, once again, just a dense week. A little bit of red on the screen equates to some to some volume in Vixland these days. We haven't seen it in a while. You folks don't know what that color is anymore. Uh, 991,000 contracts on the tape on Wednesday. Uh, the big dog on Wednesday, 64,000 of the April 20s, followed by number two, 60,000 exactly of the May 36s. That's a great strike. 36. That's the first time I think we've seen that one popping on our list. Number three, 57,000 of the April 14 puts. Number four, 53,000 of the May 15 puts. And rounding out the top five, 45K of the May 18s. Tuesday, also dense, threatening a million contracts. 973,000. My goodness, what a banger week. 70,000 uh, for the big dog on Tuesday of the April 15 puts, followed by 65,000 for number two of the 13 half puts. Uh, those 70,000, those are the ones expiring this week on the 10th. So number one, so interesting. Uh, number two, 65,000 of the April expiring course. Next week, 13 half puts. 58,000 for number three of the 16 calls. Number four, 47K of the 15 puts. And rounding out the top five on a pretty dense Tuesday. 36K of the May 25s. Getting out to Monday. Monday had to be sleepy, right? No one was putting up contracts on Monday. Wasn't there an eclipse this week? Wasn't anybody watching it? I guess the answer is no. 777,000 contracts on the tape on Monday. 54K was number one. That was the April 17s, followed by number two, 40,000 of the June 15 puts. Number three, 38,000 of the April 13 half puts. Number four, 36,000 of the June 14 puts. And rounding out the top five on a banger day, on a banger week, 31,000 of the June 17s. Uh, Mr. Meatball, I am already exhausted from reading off this tsunami of paper. <laughs> There's been a lot going up this week. What caught your eye on VIX options this week, sir? Well, how do you think the guy? How do you think the guy that sold the uh, the twenty thirty five call spread at uh, twenty two cents feels right now? <laughs> that went up twelve thousand times. How do you think that guy? He feels worse than you, Mark. Don't worry. Oh, yeah, um, I, yeah. I, I I love that the the biggest trade of the day so far that I'm seeing is the um, the May uh, fourteen puts. Pretty big trade, pretty big uh, put buyer, I believe. Um, not, I, I, you know, normally we would see a bunch of of big trades, at, you know, big kind of call buying ahead of this, and there really wasn't on Wednesday or on Thursday. The biggest trades were the May and April thirteen and a half puts. Um, you know, I'm looking to see if, if, if Wednesday we got anything. No, I mean. Um, you know, I, I don't know how well positioned the market was ahead of time, but the, I do think that, uh, this, this may have caught a few people flat footed. We, uh, the, the market was pretty darn, uh, content ahead of this, uh, of this move. Michael, if you could pull your head away this week from, uh, the activity out there in UVX, why anything catching your eye or making you stroke your chin and say, hum, in the world of VIX options and also, uh, do you ever move away from UVXY and maybe sling a little bit of the old mothership options, or is is that verboten? Are you UVXY or bust? Oh no, I've I've got Vic spreads on right now. Oh, there you um, go. <laughs> but uh, so yesterday, uh, as as SPX was rallying, volatility was was very sticky. Uh, M1 and M2 uh, just weren't giving anything back, uh, at least for the first half of the day. Uh, so, and, you know, did somebody know something or was there a large purchase? If you guys didn't see any large purchases out there, I'm not sure why it was so sticky yesterday. Uh, but, and it could have just been positioning, waiting for the, the Middle East tensions, 
uh, could have been an apprehension ahead of bank earnings. Who knows? But it was it was there yesterday. I saw it, and it's been that way. I've I've noticed it quite frequently since uh, December uh, that we'll get this uh, counter move, uh, counter correlation move to to SPX movements. Got to change your handle on Twitter to UVXY and a little bit of VIX Trader. How's that sound? Is that, is that not quite as strong branding? I don't know. Maybe a smattering of UVIX as well. What do you think? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I, I named my boat Vixen, V I X apostrophe N. How about that? Oh, yes. Uh, the much uh, beloved, much bemoaned. I know there was a push internally to make those some of those products the actual Vixens, they were going to call it. And then they got some. Uh, they got some pushback, shall we say, internally from that branding. I wonder why. Uh, but let's keep on rolling. Let's go out to, we talked about UVXY and UVIX. If we're talking UVIX, you got to talk its sibling product, uh, SVIX. Coming back down, Mr. Meatball, to levels we haven't seen in a little bit. 36 handle. That may still sound like a lot, and it is. But we haven't been in this threatening mid-30s range in a while. We've been hanging out north of 40 for quite some time. Uh, 36 even right now, down a little over 3, about 3.1 points from this time last week. Uh, go figure, all it took was a little bit of a mini collapse here of SVIX to get some paper flowing. 8,400 contracts on the tape right now out there in SVIX. Uh, that's pretty good when you consider the ADV is only 3,500. So again, that's the thing. We were just joking earlier about the liquidity difference between UVIX and UVXY, but you know, SVIX is another beast entirely. It uh, just can't really get out of its own way from an options volume perspective. Again, though, 8,400 contracts on the tape today. The big dog today, by the way, listeners, about 1,500 of the 40 half, 40.5 calls going up today. These expire on the 26th, so they got two weeks on these bad boys. But uh, that's that's the big dog out there. Let's just look really quickly, see what are these bad boys print. They traded for 50 cents exactly. So I don't know. Mr. Meatball, what do you think? Is 50 cent playing an SVIX now? Has he come to play there instead? These went up exactly 50 cents, sir. <laughs> I don't believe 50 cent is playing in the uh in the uh in the inverse ETF space. <laughs> that would just be my You my don't bad. think 1500 uh SVIX calls is his size, sir? What's what I don't understand. Why would you why would you think that? Yeah, no. I I one it's a little small and two I don't think that's uh yeah, that's not his style. Uh interesting play though. Um really interesting play. Um let me take a look at the at the trade here. Did they buy these or they, did they buy or sell? The first print went up buy. Then they traded 70 cents later and stuff. So a little, little bit of back and forth here. The first one I see, though, is 50 cents. Oh, yeah. Cents. They're, yeah, they bought. Yeah. They bought. Interesting. Interesting little play. That's a, that's a pretty big – I mean, you're looking for a big vol turnaround between now and uh, next and the 26th. So pretty aggressive – Pretty aggressive ball turnaround. Now, yeah. I know I know you've been waiting for a moment to get back in on SVIX. I think you were, were you selling some puts? Are you back in? Is this your moment? Are you still waiting for more? What are you looking at out there? Well, the, the vol the ball's exploding. It's up to 72. So this let me see where the May 30 puts look. Where where the May 30 the May 30 puts the implied ball, you know, you can sell those at like two bucks. Those get to like three dollars. Now, now we're talking. Now we're then now we're talking, but right now no, I I don't see anything. I I'm not quite ready to jump in. You want ten percent? You want a clean ten percent? And then I you're back. I want a clean ten percent. <laughs> That's your level. Ten percent, not a penny below. Listeners out there, uh, Mr. Michael, same question for you. We were talking about Uvix earlier. Uh, what you mentioned, Svix. Uh, you obviously watch it. W what are your thoughts on Svix? I, I mean, if you don't like Uvix from a liquidity perspective, I have to imagine you're a little bit tepid about SVIX, but what are your thoughts on this product launched with a lot of brouhaha, a lot of hand wringing around it. And so far from an options volume perspective has yet to deliver, sir. But from a underlying perspective, you just bought this thing doing all right. Uh, yeah. And, and actually I, I was pushing for the weeklies cause it only had monthlies for quite some time. And, and I pushed, I pushed on the right people and we finally got weeklies, but nobody will trade with me. So it's just me and the market makers. <laughs> Trading SVIX options. Uh, so, especially on a day like today, if, if we close near the lows, that locks in a lot of beta slippage. Uh, and it's, you know, while if VIX drops back down to, to a 12 or 13 handle, SVIX will not get back up to its 
former glory the way that UVIX will drop down to new lows. Uh, it's just the nature of the product. Uh, at, at the beginning of the year, I was I was trying to sell calls, out of the money calls in SVIX, just to take advantage of this beta slippage. And my I was selling the forty dollar calls, and it's it's only danced around that. I think we got up to forty two or forty three. Uh, in the interim, but you can see how far we've fallen from there, and it'll just be hard to get back to that level, uh, just given the beta slippage uh, reality that it has to fight. Uh, but you can use that to your advantage. It doesn't have to be a, a negative. Well, I'm glad someone else was beating that drum for weeklies in SVIX. We've, we've been calling for that for quite some time, and you're right, we finally do have them, which is probably one of the reasons why we're seeing uh, this ADV start to move in the right direction. Like you, I would like a little bit more, a little bit more liquidity out here. But uh, nonetheless, it's moving at least in the right direction from a volume perspective. If you're long it, not moving in the right direction today. But hey, that could open up new opportunities to get back in. Maybe you like the meatball. You're waiting for that three percent on that May downside put. In which case, you got a little bit more ways to go, listeners. But uh, you're starting to get there. I'm looking at one and a quarter at two thirty on that end of month, May 30 put. So you got a little ways to go to get the three bucks, but it could happen out there, listeners. As we keep on rolling, before we get to the crystal ball really quickly, let's wind things up with kind of, uh, I won't say a bit of an also ran for us right now, but kind of a forgotten, a bit of a redheaded stepchild in the vol ETP space, uh, which is VXX, 15.1 right now, 15.10, up about 1.1 points on the week. Uh, today, though, putting up some numbers out there today. So VXX starting to wake up starting to remember shades of its former glory listeners when it used to do 400 plus thousand contracts in a day some days eclipsing vix options itself uh, those are quite a few of those tail wagging the dog days back in back i go back a ways into the history of the show to find those hasn't really been doing that anymore certainly post barclays but 208,000 contracts on the day today that is certainly respectable especially when you see that the adv is only 72,000 so people playing in UV, excuse me, in VXX out there again today. Michael, you mentioned VXX before as well. Uh, where do you fall in VXX? Are you out there playing again? Or are you, like a lot of our listeners, kind of washed your hands of it post Barclays? You're like, you know, once bitten, twice shy, three times, the heck with it, I'm out. Uh, no, I'm not, as, I'm not as worried. I figured uh, the trouble that they got into over that misstep, they probably hired four guys to watch the paperwork every single day so that this doesn't happen again. So I'm not worried about that risk. Uh, but like I said, all these products are, they're all based off of M1 and M2. Uh, they all move based on their levering the same each day. So it really doesn't matter what you pick. Uh, pick one that, that, that targets your risk profile. Like I said, you can dial it in. VXX is just a 1X product. So you're not going to get hurt as badly. If it goes against you, you're not going to make as much as it goes your way. Uh, but back when I was playing it, I haven't played it in years, but back when I was, I used it because the spreads were so tight, one or two pen, one or two cents uh, for any of the strikes. So I used it for large lot trades. I was playing uh, large calendar spreads that I would roll every week. I would just roll the, the short near weekly at the end of every week, I rolled the long weekly once every two or three weeks. Uh, and they were large lots and VXX allowed me to do that. I, I would get killed if I tried to do that in UVIX with the, with the spreads and what the market makers are uh, making off us on that. Yeah. A little bit challenging to do that <laughs> in UVIX right now can get it off decently in, in VXX today with these kind of numbers. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, maybe, maybe the warm is turning out there. Maybe, People have short memories in the markets at the end of the day. Maybe they just need a vol product. And there's so many new people entering the market. We see it on this show every week. There's people coming in who, who to them, the Barclays event is an old school. They don't know what the hell we're talking about. So uh, to them, that's, that's old news to them. So there certainly could be a contingent that are discovering this for the first time. But listen, speaking of time, we're almost out of it. So let's get now to the most difficult, the most dangerous portion of the show. Michael, I hope they prepped you because it is time. With a crystal ball. It's time to peer into the future 
and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the crystal ball. All right, listeners, welcome to the crystal ball, the portion of the show we attempt valiantly to wrestle Vol down and pin it down for the coming week, sometimes with uh, not the best outcomes like this week. <laughs> Nobody, spoiler alert, nobody had an 18 handle on the show last week, which is where we're hanging out right now, right around an 1840 or so. So we've come off of the 19 handle, but still very frothy, very juicy. The closest, I will say this, I will tip my cap to our buddy, Mr. Dr. Vicks, a.k.a. Russell Rhodes. He was on the show last week. He came in at a very uh, American-friendly 1776. Uh, it seemed kind of high at the time, but hey, in retrospect, not so bad. So his crazy upside game that he's been playing for nearly a decade now on the show <laughs> finally starting to pay some dividends for him even if it wasn't sufficient so russell was the closest uh mr meatball with his palindromic nonsense was behind him at 1661 i was the rear la i was the rear downside player this week at 1595 so no joy for me no joy for any of us even russell still off about three quarters of a point so that's a long way around michael to saying you get the dubious honor of going first sir uh, what do you feel for Vix Cash at this time, the end of the show next week, sir? Oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> uh, 1475, right there. Wow, giving it all right back up. Okay, interesting. 1475 for Mr. UVXY and also Vix options and a little bit of smattering of uh, UVix and perhaps. Uh, some VXX on the side. That's that's all of your branding encapsulated, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, I won't talk about my T triple Q positioning, but <laughs> yeah, that's most of it. That'll be for another time. That music also yeah, means we are pretty much out of time. So, Mr. Michael, if folks want to check you out on the aforementioned Twitter or see what you have cooking over there in the land of Dorjolet Capital, where should they go? What should they do? Uh, easiest way to remember is uvxy.pro. That's my free education site where I answer uh, basic questions about UVXY, try to dispel uh, all the misconceptions and, and long form answers to what I've answered for over a decade on Twitter. Uh, that'd be the easiest way to find me. Check them out, listeners, and I'll have to report to Mr. Jim Carroll on your progress. We'll see what he thinks about, we'll see what grade he gives you on your appearance here. He's a very tough grader at the end of the day. Meanwhile, check them out on Twitter, listeners. And Mr. Meatball, sir, what are you feeling for this time next week? You're going to go 1881, 1771, dare I say it, 1991? What's floating your boat? Yeah, I, you know, I was debating whether I want to go 1881, 1991, 1771, or go back to 1661. I'm going to, but I'm going to go, uh, what, what, did, uh, what did Michael say? He said uh, 14, 14 and three quarters, yeah. You said it's all going away, baby. 14 and three quarters? Yep. All right. I'm going to, I'm kind of with him, but I don't know that we're going to go that far. I'm going to say 1661. <laughs> <laughs> 1661 for the meatball. And Mr. Meatball, if folks want to check out what you have cooking, uh, or maybe talk up some of these out of the money puts and SVICs, where should they go? What should they do? Yeah, you know, follow me on Twitter at Option Pit, and obviously you can go to OptionPit.com and check out everything I'm doing, uh, putting out great vol content on a daily basis. You don't want to miss it. Ah, uh, so now it's my turn, listeners. And yeah, again, the great question, will the vol persist all the way through to showtime this time next week? That is the eternal question we have wrestled with for over a decade now here on volatility views, and I am grappling with once again. I don't hate, quite frankly, where the meatball is lining up in the mid-16, giving up some of this juice, but not all of it. But I will be a little bit more respectful, uh, giving him a little bit more wiggle room. I'm going to say we're going to give up some of the juice, but not, not all of it. I'm going to say 17 and a quarter. So that's your market for this time next week, listeners. Mr. UBXY and other products at 14 and three quarters. Uh, the Greasy Meatball at a 16.61. And myself playing the rear upside role, 17 and a quarter. I'm usually more of the Goldilocks kind of guy. I'm looking at some of our chat. We've got, oh, man, 18 and three quarters, 1930 coming in. You folks are feeling some ball. Oh, there we go. Option got out of 16. So you're kind of all over the place as we are here on the show as well. Remember, if you're listening after the fact on the podcast, get those predictions in by the end of the day today. If you're within our tenth of a point margin of victory, I know it's hard. 
Man, we had that tenth of a point. We kept it all during the pandemic, listeners. Never budged it. Despite what the meatball, he used to call me up. Oh, let's move it. It's so hard. But no, kept it a tenth of a point when Val was whipping around in the 30s. You can do it now. It's just a mere 16, 18. That's nothing. <laughs> so get them in. If you get within that tenth of a point margin of victory, you too can win fabulous prizes. Unfortunately, if you're listening on the podcast, that also means that we'll conclude your broadcast week with us. I want to thank all of you out there for joining us throughout the week. Remember, if you don't want your broadcast week to end with volatility views, you want to come back for a little bit of, shall we say, weirdo crazy paper, a little bit of options oddities, head on over to theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. I'll be back in a little bit with the Rock Lobster to break down all that funky paper and a whole bunch more. Maybe get his thoughts on vol as well, given the fact that it is a pretty vol heavy day out there. Then, of course, back again on Monday, kicking things off with the option block and our new pals over there from public all the way through to next Friday. Another episode of Volatility Views. Stay safe out there, everybody. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options 